Okay, here we go. This is going to be our little lecture on logging, and I put this just as close to the beginning of the semester as I can because this is one of the things that I really like to, to pound um, about, about anything, really. If you're going to be good in networking or going to be good in anything, you kind of have to be able to solve your own problems. You have to be able to feed yourself. And one of the, the biggest things in that is looking at your logs. So when students yell at me and, Stephen, this didn't work, this didn't work, and I'll say, what do your logs say? Now, sometimes that is out of laziness, I must admit, but it's something that you, that you need to do. You know, a lot of times your logs will tell you a lot of stuff, and you can sort of figure out problems on your own. So that's, that's where you need to start. Any kind of problem you have, everything logs something. Um, you also have some kind of, of line to walk about, do you want to log tons of stuff? When and who and why and where and what exactly did they do and what exactly did they get? You can do that, but then your log files start getting big, and you're taking that processor cycles writing stuff down if you're really, really busy. Or you can go the other way and be really quick and just say, what time and who was it? And then you run the risk of, ooh, I don't have enough information to do an autopsy on this. So you have to walk some kind of line between speed and completeness. Let's get a picture of the lay of the land here. This is my VM, Windows 2008 server. My IP address is 254.141. And I'm going to hit that with this guy. This is my client, and he is 254.175. So server is 141. I created a really simple, um, I'm going to try to write this number down. As soon as I change it, I'll, I'll lose it. 141. Good enough. Create a real simple little website in C colon, C drive, INET pub, www root, index.html, and I am going to open with notepad. That's it. Some of my beautiful code. So when I go out and I bring up a browser and I hit this, that's somebody else's. And I hit 141. This is Stephen's test page. And that's it. So I've got a simple page. It works. It doesn't have a fav icon, so I'm going to be getting those errors. So this is the simplest instance of having a website. But this will kick out errors of some sort. Or not just errors, but logging. Who hit your website? So if I close this, how do you take a look at your logs? Well, let's take a look and see where it's specified. You can run 20 different web servers on this one physical box um, for different things. You can log them all together. You can log them separately. You can log different bits and pieces of information for each one. It's just something that you have a lot of flexibility in tuning. I've just got one website, site's default website, and they actually give you logging. That's pretty simple. In logging, um, this is grayed out. I just have one site. So I could log by site or I could log by whatever. We'll jump off that bridge another day. It's grayed out now because I just have one site. The place to go looking, we'll come back to the format in a little bit. System drive, that's going to be C colon. INET pub, logs, log files. This is different too. They've changed a good bit in 2008. You have an encoding in case you want to do stuff if, if Chinese people are going to be hitting your website and you need a more extensive character set, you could, you could use something different. You have a log file rollover. Getting back to what I said a minute ago, you could have a lot of logs. So you could run out of space. That's an issue. Just maintaining them could be a lot. If you say, did so-and-so hit my site? I have their IP address and then you find out that 400,000 people had hit your website in the last three or four days and you're trying to find that. You can log them over daily, hourly, weekly, or monthly to create new log files so that you'll actually have different files for one site so that it makes it easier to, to parse and to go through. You can have the maximum size. Say, when you get to 10 megabytes, um, create a new one. 
or start tacking on to the end, uh, getting rid of the oldest records and putting in the newest ones. You could, s that sounds creative. Do not create log files. Okay. And use local time or global time for the naming in a rollover. Rollover being creating new files with new dates. And it's gonna, it's gonna matter by this too, what it's gonna name them. Because your log files will have some sort of information about when they were created. So let's take a look at it. Um, if I go to C drive, INETPUB, logs, log files. See, INETPUB, logs. I think that's a better place to put it. Log files. Where do we get W3SVC1? That'd be like www service one. Um, That's specified somewhere. That's also W3C, that is, that's your format too. So anyway, let's go ahead and look at it. And we'll say, take a look at this, UEX 09, the year 0827, that's today, dot log. It's making a new one. Is it making them daily? What have I got it set for? It's making a new one daily. So tomorrow I would have an 0828. Double click on this guy to look at it. Notice my scroll bar at the bottom goes left to right a long way. There's a lot of information by default in here. It's got the software version, the date. This fields is going to become important. We'll go back and look at it. And then you have what's happened, good and bad, with your website. Now, it looks like at 16.04, there's no way that it's four o'clock. Is the clock wrong on my server? It's, I don't know. Oh, that must be global time. It's not using the local clock. All right. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. It's got a time. This is my IP address. I'm 141, right? I got to get at port 80 from 175. If you remember, that was my host's IP address. And it's got a lot more information in there. We'll scroll on toward the end. And finally, you've got this, 200, 0, 0, 500. Now, notice I said that this fields line was going to come back and be handy for us. This tells you what each one of the things means. Your date, your time, source IP, um, source port. It's got a source port in there? I missed that. Okay. Finally, you get down to your server return status. That's that 200. It was okay. Um, you have a substatus. You've got a 404 or a 200. You're starting to get the feel for what those are. You can also have a substatus under that. So you can have a 404 with a little bit more explanation of like a, a 25, saying it wasn't found, but here's some more information about it. So there are substatuses underneath your main status, statuses. The Windows 32 status, what it thought about, and the time that it took. So the 200 minute was good, and it took 500, I guess, milliseconds. I'm bluffing there. But this can help you see how long it took to pull stuff down. Tons of information in there. All right, so there was when I hit it, and then I asked um, Kyle to hit it just a few minutes ago, and I know that I am 175. I will bet that his IP address is 148, so I can prove that he has seen my website, and it's comparable. He got all that stuff. He probably would get an error. Yeah, there's your error when it couldn't find that fav icon. There you go. He got a 404. So it makes sense. And then I refreshed when I was started the video. Notice the return status is a 304. That's not an error. It's saying, yeah, you've already got it. That's a refresh. But it only took 187 versus the 500 that it originally took. Small difference, small sight. The 
fields are separated with spaces. So that should help you kind of to to see what's going on. I was trying to find that source IP. I never did see it. I'll tinker with it some more later. Anyway, that's logging. That you can see what's going on. Now let's go back to this. Your log file. You can specify different types of logs. The IIS. Let's take a look. You can say help and it actually tells you some more stuff. Oh, here's there's your format. One log file per and you can set that to site. It doesn't have any other options. Okay. That's only when it makes sense anyway. The format that you log in. You can log in as binary. Okay. The W W three C is one of the most common ones. I've lost my place. Here we go. Tell us some more about it. IIS, this, these are all the fields that it will put in there for you if you use IIS, that formatting standard. The NCSA is built to be short. You wouldn't have that big long scroll left to right to look and see. It's just putting in host address, um, remote name, username, da -da 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 -da, and it's there, byte sent. Looks like it doesn't even have the return code. Okay. W3C has lots of stuff. One cool thing about it is you can specify the fields that are logged. And then you can do some kind of, of custom field. All right, back to where we were. You have different formats for how you want to log. There's your different options. Custom. Let's do W3C select fields. You can actually select what stuff you want to include. Even though that I, I had a whole bunch of stuff in there, I can actually include service name, whatever, byte sent, byte received, protocol. This actually has explanations too. CS username, because I didn't know exactly what these were. These will help you decipher that that page. You can monitor cookies. That's cool. So you can actually pull out stuff that you don't want if you want your logs to be a little bit thinner. So, pretty simple. You can make it complicated. You can tweak it any way you want to, but that should be it. And we start doing more um, more stuff, we'll look into more options on logging on how you can log for each site. Yes. Okay, I've got a bright idea. We'll carry this just a little bit further. Let's see some different stuff being kicked into that field. If I do local disk, init pub, www root, and delete everything out of there. Not a good idea. Now there's nothing in that directory. What's it going to do when I try to hit this IP address? If I come out and that's not what I wanted. I wanted this and I do a shift and load that. Forbidden access is denied. Don't have don't have directory permissions. What it's trying to do is just trying to list the files that are in the directory, and it basically choked. Notice the 403 that you got. So now, if we look at our log files, they should be more interesting. All right. We know that I am 175. Boop, boop. And let's see what we got. There's that 304. No, that's what I was looking at a few minutes ago, wasn't it? Or was it? You can look at your times, and that helps. Um, hang on a second. Okay, what I had done um, a second ago when I looked at this error, I had wiped out the uh, the directory, and the last thing that popped up was a 304. We got an error saying that there was nothing there. It couldn't get a directory access. This last line popped in a little bit later. Notice the error code. It's a 403. The status codes for, for, let me get out of this VM. That's what I wanted. That. The status codes for HTTP, 
the best definition I found for them is in Wikipedia. The RFC listed the codes, but it didn't list the subcodes. And your codes are generally, these are just some of the general. If it's one something, it's informational. If it's two something, it's a success. If it's three something, it's a redirection. And if it's a four something, it's a client error. The 404, that's an error. We know that if it's good and nothing's wrong, it's a two something. Now, what we got was a 403. Just the fact that it starts with a four means that it's an error. And we got a subcode. The subcodes aren't listed everywhere. That's why I went to Wikipedia to find it. I like Wikipedia. There, to see it. So I've got that 403. And there's 403 meaning forbidden. It wasn't that it wasn't there, the not found. It was you were forbidden from doing it. So, and it actually lists the 40314, and the meaning of that is directory listing denied. So that does make sense. So there's an example of your logs. Later on in the class, what we will do, instead of getting ugly um, status pages or return pages, we'll learn how to make them prettier if you want them for your, your website or how to redefine those. So that's it.